People used to say a photo is worth a thousand words. So I thought maybe take a couple of photos, you have a story. But it's not that simple. Actually, uh, I was attracted to, you know, observing things, documenting some things without interrupting, you know, like, like, sort of like being the invisible person. Now, when I got a chance to at first enter uh, to work for the new paper 20 years ago, um, I was lucky enough to work with this gentleman by the name of Melvin Singh. So he's my senior and he has brought me to places which you can only imagine, like going after insurgency, uh, you know, insurgency leaders in Aceh. Uh, usually it's all, it all deals with um, tension, you know. So I thought, hey, wow, this is so exciting. In our region, there are so many things that we don't know about and it just requires us to transport ourselves and to go down there and understand the story, understand their plight. So I was inspired after, on a few occasions, coming back unharmed, that you know I would like to be someone like him. Yeah, but I realized after a few years I needed to you know strike it on my own and create my own brand. So I like to do stories that are related to crime or basically stories that people don't want to talk to you about. It feels that there's something to hide, and and I I want to dig. I want to find out the truth. Yeah. Well, I think in the beginning. The person must be, uh, you know, very interested or curious in news or in uh, or with things happening around the person, community stuff and so on. Um, today's journalist is different from journalists of my my time or my predecessors because you need to be everything. You need to be a multitasker. You need to be fast. You need to know about gadgets. You need to know how to transmit pictures, videos, and so on. So. Um, in terms of qualifications, if you go for courses that deals with multimedia or software, editing software and so on, I, I'm sure your prospective employers will look favorably towards you. Yeah, But at the center of it, I think is your need to tell a story, to tell someone's story. And how best to tell that story, it all depends on the tools that are available. So you can, um, you know, many people consume news differently. So. Some people like myself, I like to look at videos or short clips. I don't really like to read too much print. Yeah. Uh, where the, and then there are the old school, old school guys. They like print. They like to feel the ink in their hands when they, you know, flip the pages. So it all depends. Yeah. Actually, when I was a kid, I thought, oh, it would be nice. It actually, it was secondary school, I think. Yeah. It would be nice to work for a motorcycle magazine or any job that allows you to ride a motorcycle once in a while. You know, and, and wow, well, I mean this position. You know, it all started, I think, 2005, uh, when uh, a former editor of uh, the new paper asked me, hey, what is this thing that can attract male readers? You know, like red-blooded excitement, adventure, and so on. So I said, motorcycles. So he wasn't really convinced, but he, he asked again, are, are you really sure? I said, yes try it out so and this is already like 15 years into into the start of biker boy and i've tested more than 200 motorcycles uh you've got the following our videos um you know and now now it's transferred to the straits times our video attracts uh, anywhere between 10,000 to 98,000 views and um yeah i mean i hate to tell this to my mom but i'm really enjoying this but my mom doesn't like too much of motorcycles. Every mother, you know, worries about you know riding, and and yeah. But there's no other job that allows you to chase and go into an, with an adventure, right? Go into an adventure, chase an adventure, and write your dreams. So I, I guess I was I'm lucky. I, I've ridden. I think like many riders in Singapore, I've ridden from Singapore to uh, to Phuket to Koh Samui from Singapore, yeah. Um, but I, I and I've also done international rides like uh, when I test motorcycles in Spain or Italy or even Austria. But one ride that I will remember, um, this one was early 2000s, uh, was a ride from Seoul to North Korea. Um, I was part of a convoy of I think about maybe 150 people, representatives from around the world. They're all riders. This was part of some reunification talk between North Korea and South Korea. Uh, they were exploring each other. 
So they, somebody must have thought, hey, it'd be nice to invite people of the world to come and see both cultures, both sides of the divide. And yeah, we got to ride into North Korea. Um, one thing that I realized is it's a big country. The roads are pristine, cleaner than Singapore, conditioned, perfect, bumps, very little. And I thought about it, maybe it's because not many people can afford to drive. Uh, you see a lot of government cars, uh, army trucks and so on. So that's one thing. Lah. But to get into the country is not easy. Unfortunately, with a name like mine that starts with Z, I was the last out of the 150 to be cleared at immigration uh, on the North Korean side. And I had to go through it again when coming out. But I, I think it was worth it because uh, it's a journey, a ride of a lifetime. And um, I would not have seen it if not for this special invitation. Be, don't be afraid to push your boundaries, you know, because I think being Asians, we are used to, uh, yes sir, yes, you know, we don't want to rock the boat or so on. But sometimes, they, you, you should ask one or two more questions that can give you a better picture of a situation. Um, so I'm not saying that this you should you should be defiant uh, and and every time you go for a government interview an agency interview you you know you come at you sound militant no i'm saying that there are some stories where people don't want to talk to you you can easily just walk away oh no interview no one wants to talk to me or you can chip away uh, you know with determination and slowly try 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 until You've exhausted everything until even the newsmaker says, okay, I'll talk to you. That has happened a couple of times. Then you get a bigger picture and you'll do justice to the story instead of at that point, no one wants to talk, no story, you know. So you, you mustn't give up. Here is a trash area. Brother, where you're from, ah? Huh? Hey, where you're from, ah? Huh? Hey, no, 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 don't run, don't run. Oi, dangerous. Come, come, come. Take one, take one. You're not here, come on. You're cooking. 